And today we're going to be looking at the DX Commander all band vertical antenna. This antenna comes from Callum M0 MCX. My name is Callum from DX Commander. I've got a cool sign of M0 MCX. Uh, you can check out his uh, website. I'll put a link in the description below and also to Callum's YouTube channel, also called DX Commander. And he manufactures these all band vertical antennas. Uh, he's also got uh, some portable uh, vertical antennas as well for um, different HF bands and he's also got an 18 meter extreme nebula or uh, nebula <laughs> vertical antenna which is uh, uh, quite an antenna that's for sure but this one is the all band vertical classic so this one is the 10 meter pole and basically this is a squid pole antenna uh, what we have is quarter wave verticals on uh, different HF bands. You can choose which bands you want to use, but uh, in my case, I'm going to be using uh, all of them. And uh, yeah, we're gonna build this and see how it goes. So thank you to Callum, M0MCX, for sending me this antenna. It arrived uh, packaged up a couple of days ago. Very quick postage from the United Kingdom to here in Australia. So uh, what do you get in the box? Well, basically to start off with, you get the DX Commander pole and we uh, undo the top cap and we get a, telescop a telescopic squid pole. Yeah, all, all in all comes out to about 10 metres long. So we're going to put that together today. What else is in the box? Let's have a look. We also have included some stickers. Also in the bag there is a SO239 uh, connector as well which connects to our base plate but we'll go back all through that later on there is various plates here so this is a radial plate for the bottom of the antenna this is uh, uh, a, a guy stay point and also our elements come up through this uh, plastic nylon plastic which uh, feels really feels really good and really strong so we've got three of those plates we've also got a top spreader as well for the top half of the antenna and we've got a, uh, a, a plate for our elements. So this is our driven element uh, plate. So that's uh, in one box. We've also got two boxes of wire. Now this is 100 meters of 24 slash 0.2 millimeter times 0.65 millimeter uh, black wire. And just looking at that, that looks to be really nice looking wire so i've got two rolls of this because the antenna that i bought uh, will do 80 meters as well and you need a little bit of extra wire callum also sells this antenna uh, for 40 meters and up so you can build an all band vertical for 40 meters and up but i wanted the option for 80 so i bought the the extra wire for that but you can check out all of his options on his website as well uh, so we've got the other other box of wire there too and we've got a bag full of all sorts of different parts. We've got uh, some hose clamps, some nylon cord, uh, some carabiners in there, some heat shrink, and uh, some uh, lugs and all sorts of other things in there too. So this is uh, this looks a very well put together kit as far as uh, what the simplicity looks like of it anyway, and also very complete. So uh, this looks good. So I should explain what this antenna actually is. So the DX Commander operates in a similar fashion to what a fan dipole is, except that the it turned on 90 degrees on its axis. A fan dipole is a horizontal dipole antenna, and you run multiple wires for the different bands that you want. Uh, this works on a similar principle, except it's, as I said, it's turned 90 degrees on its axis. So you have multiple quarter wave vertical sections for the different bands that you want strung up the pole and you also have a radial uh, ground radial system so we need to make some radials for this antenna as well which will just lay on the ground and attach to that ground plate so it's quite a simple antenna when you think about it the other thing with this dx commander all band vertical as well is that the 40 meter element actually goes up to right up to the top of the pole and folds back over itself a little bit so you get the quarter wave on 40 meters but the little fold back pick actually makes it load up uh, on 15 meters as a 5 8 type antenna so that's going to be interesting to see how that uh, how that goes because I have been doing a little bit of 
15 meter DX as well lately, so I wanna see if that makes a bit of a difference. So let's go ahead and put this antenna together and see how we go. DX Commander. Okay, so I've printed off a set of instructions. These are available on Callum's website on the antenna. So as I was saying before, this uh, antenna is a all band vertical and acts like a folded uh, a fan dipole, sorry. So we've got um, a list of element lengths here, so I might uh, try try those to start, start off with. Recommend just printing off these instructions first before starting. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is go ahead and put my radial, uh, my bolts in for my radial plate here. I incorrectly said that this was the driven element because I thought that it had the SO239 on it, but we'll go ahead and put the bolts on this and then we'll sort out the driven element. If constructed well, you end up with the most economic, efficient QRO antenna system on the planet. So both of my base plates have now been done with the wing nuts on them. So I've got the driven element and the radial plate. I've just got to fit the SO239 connector on there afterwards. But the next thing I'm going to do is you're provided with this um, tubing, this clear tubing. And what this needs to do is needs to go around. You need to cut this into uh, certain lengths, which is in the manual, and then put this around the hose clamp. We call it hose clamp in Australia. I think they call them Jubilee clips in the UK. So I did forget to mention the reason that we do this on these hose clamps is because the hose clamps are used to hold the sections of the DX Commander vertical mast so that uh, because it's telescopic, we don't want it to pull back down and fall. So this just gives a little bit of tension on the uh, pole that goes through the middle to stop that. So uh, and the, the tubing is just to protect it so it doesn't crush it. Found that it helps to bend the tube as you go round. So if you put the tube in and start going round, you can see that it makes a kink with the, with the hose clamp. So just bend the tube and that helps to get the hose clamp around the corner. When you work, get to the smaller clamps, they might start to get a little bit more difficult, but if you work at it slowly, You'll get there. I've got a kookaburra laughing at me. I've got a kookaburra laughing at me. The next thing I'm going to be doing is I'll cut the lengths for the other band. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave 30 metres and 80 metres out because they use the same um, hole in the antenna and I'm, I don't really want to set it up with 80 meters just yet. I want to try it on all the other bands first. So rather than wasting wire cutting one for 30, I'm going to cut one for 10, 12, 17, 20, 40, and 40 will also give me the 5 8 for 15 meters as well. <laughs> oh. nice wire. I like that. This feels like really high quality wire. Okay, 11.15 meters. Good thing is that Callum says that these are wide band, so cutting the elements whilst you want to get them right 
it's not super critical. I can't overemphasize how good this wire is. It's, it's not even getting tangled. Like, I just unravel it from the roll. It's got some, uh, some kinks and stuff, but it's just, it's just amazing. It's not getting caught up at all. Shout out to Jason from Ham Radio 2.0, by the way. I believe that he's been taking a while to get his DX Commander up in the air. Mine only took, well I'm putting this together, it arrived I think three or four days ago, so I'm pretty keen to try this antenna out, but maybe there's the, the, cha the challenge has been thrown down, man. The challenge has been thrown down to you. Get it up in the air. Let's, uh, let's see the build video. Jason from Ham Radio 2.0. There's the challenge, it's been set. Okay, four bunches of three and a half meter, five lengths of cable for radials. They're all done. So what I do is I thought I'd show you this. So this is the radial. So I've got one, two, three, four, five wires here bunched. What I do is I twist these all together. I, I trim off about, probably about 10, 10 millimeters or so. I'm not sure it's not really focusing quite well there about 10 millimeters or so, and just a small amount of solder, just to bind them together and to give a good electrical connection. What I'll do is I'll put that over the top of the lug, then I'll crimp this down, so just make sure that the wires do fit in there, they just, if you push them in, you can just get them in nice and snug, and then crimp down on there, and what I like to do is now after I've done that is just solder in here and then that will give a nice electrical connection to that uh, ground or radial. Now do this for the elements as well. So I'm going to go ahead now and do the rest of my radials and the radiating elements. Alright, so I think I'll put my DX Commander right here. This seems to be a, a pretty reasonable spot and I've got uh, a bit of space around it. So um, yeah, one just here. So now I need to measure out 1.2 meters and knock in my guy stakes into the ground. So I'm just figuring out the most level spot to put this antenna. Now the bottom of the the bottom of the DX commander comes off so that you can fit the radial plate on. At least ah the driven element plate, not the radial plate. So we've got the driven element plate there. And that screws on now. Just need to work out where that's going to sit, which should be, should sit nicely about there. So now what we need to do is measure out from that point 120 degrees for our stakes to go in. Take this bottom plate off again and slide slide the bottom tube out so pull up and twist so our first our guy plate should go here okay so I should have now three lengths of equal paracord for guying this antenna. Now I just got some carabiners, some from the local hardware, some fairly cheap carabiners, and that will allow me to clip it on without having to worry about tying it up all the time. So now it's a case of just unclipping 
the antenna like this and it's time to put some elements on. So one thing I didn't say with this pole is that you, once you take the top cap off, you just, ow. You simply just uh, tip it upside down and you pull out each section as it comes. So pulling up, up, twisting it, next section up, twisting it. And you have to use a little bit more force the further you get down the pole. Well, it's quite whiffy and high already. Oh, don't catch your fingers either. Oh, that hurt. And twist, okay. That's at full height. So now what I need to do is maneuver it. I need to maneuver it under my other antenna. Oh, okay, so it's the second day. Um, yesterday I just ran out of time to finish filming. So what I did was I put together the rest of the DX Commander and uh, stuck it up in the air to do a bit of uh, testing to see what the SWR was like on the bands that I have chosen it for. And uh, it comes up pretty good actually. The only thing that I'm missing now is the 80 and 30 metre uh, element. So the, the 80 metre element is going to be an inverted L. What I'm going to do is take, take this down now um, and I'll show you how I put it together and we'll fit the, um, we'll do some trimming. There's just uh, the SWR was just off on a couple of the other bands. So I'll uh, trim that up and uh, show you how I put this antenna together. All right, so as I mentioned, this antenna, um, I put it together at the end of yesterday, tested it with some, um, on the, the bands that I've, I've already put on. So I've put on 20 meters, uh, 12 meters, 40, which is also doubles as 15, uh, 17 and 10. So all I need to do is put on the 30 and 80 meter element and I also need to just trim some of these elements a little bit shorter. Um, this is the uh, radial plate, so this sits, so pretty much the pole just sits on the ground and you connect your radials up with these wing nuts. That allows you to disconnect it easily and quickly, especially if you're doing it in the field or if you're uh, maybe uh, need to mow the lawn or something like that, you can easily disconnect the radials. I've mounted the SO239 connector on here and there's some amalgamating tape around there. Um, for my design, and Callum says this in the instructions, I've uh, just connected the SO239 to this wing nut here closest so that the other elements can all be spaced out uh, evenly. There's a little bit of tension on each element. I didn't put too much tension on, on them. Some, some are probably a little bit more tighter than others, but uh, you don't need an awful lot of tension just so that it looks uh, okay while it's up in the air. So along to the first section, I put a uh, hose clamp here. This is holding the first section, uh, stop it from collapsing. This is where your guy plate is. So um, you saw that the carabiners clip in here. Then uh, traveling up the pole here, there's another hose clamp to stop the pole from coming down or a Jubilee clip, Jubilee clip. Jubilee clip. And um, all I did here was I've just used some um, some of the extra uh, shot cord and uh, done a loop here with uh, in the first element this element's uh, 10 meters and i've used just electrical tape there um, to hold it for now so he does supply glue line heat shrink to put over the top of that that will make a more permanent seal but because i wanted to make sure that i had um, it in the right area of the band i just uh, did it temporarily with tape so i'm going to uh, do that uh, with some heat shrink once I've uh, trimmed it to length it. It's about, it's resonant one to one at about 28 megahertz, but I'll show that later on anyway, but um, I do need to trim that a little bit. So that's why there's a loop and a little bit of extra shock cord in case I need to uh, extend this down. So what I do is replace this with a carabiner eventually, which will, um, which will be a lot better than just the, uh, the knot that's there. The plastic carabiners just clip straight into the, the plate just to hold it taut. So yeah, you do need to sort of work out what sort of distance you need on that and just to make sure that it's uh, going to keep it not not tight, but you can see there I'm just waving it around just so that it, it doesn't flap around too much in the wind. Like that's not going to, that's not too bad. Uh, further up the pole, another hose clamp. So I think that's the 17 metre element. Another hose clamp there. Uh, up a bit further. Um, that's using paracord, I think, instead of the shot cord, and then a small section of shot cord. I had some of that that was spare, 
and uh, this is the 20 meter element which pretty much almost comes all the way up to the plate so I do need to uh, I think I need to trim that a little bit because it is a little bit too long always good to trim your elements a little bit longer than what you uh, actually anticipate because it's easier to remove the wire than to add it another hose clamp here so that's just uh, stopping again that section from falling down don't over tighten the hose clamps on this other side is the 40 meter element so just traveling further up another hose clamp what i've what we do here is this is actually probably a little bit further down it probably can come up a little bit which i think i'll do when i trim this element so the 40 meter element loops around here and uh, you use a bit of shot cord to just stop it from uh, flapping around so that so that it's taut there and then after that loop you just keep running the wire up and through the top of the pole so i've come up here goes a little bit further um, there's some of the plastic uh, tubing just there to hold it against the pole um, i've used a couple of more bits uh, just here and then up over the eyelet and then back down again now I used some of the spare shot cord that I had here and looped the ends. However, I don't think I'm going to do that permanently now. It, it does have a bit of a bend in the top, so I think I'm just going to tape this or, or do something similar and maybe use a cable tie to just hold it in place. So then I'll also get a bit of shot cord back. But I did come down and back over the double eyelet here to stop it from moving around too much. But my 80 metre element's going to come up here and then come out at an elbow to... Uh, to the nearest tree. I'm going to go ahead and make those adjustments now on this antenna and add 80 meters, put it back up in the air and then we'll check the SWR and see how it performs. Basically I need to cut off on this first one which is going to be 10 meters. I need to cut off 4.1 centimeters now. Callum's got a very handy SWR calculator um, on his website which details exactly how much you can put in where the antenna is currently resonant and how much you need to remove or add in wire. On 10 meters I want my antenna to resonate on 28.5 megahertz so from where it's resonating at the moment I need to cut off 4.1 centimeters. So I'm going to go and do that for all the bands. I've worked out exactly how much I need to to cut off per uh, per frequency to get it resonant. So I'll cut that off and I'll be back soon. Right, let's put this bad boy back up into place. That's good, that's looking vertical. Ah, radials. Gotta put them back on. Can't underestimate, or understate, sorry, how good having the wing nuts are. It just makes it that much easier to put the radials on. Okay, so that's set up now. Pretty solid, let's go inside and do an SWR test. <laughs> good to go.
lowest SWR 1.3, just above where I want it, 7.14. So I wanted 14.2. Oh, look at that. 1 to 1, or 1.0 at 14.220. That's perfect. 1.2 at 18. 175, I can't remember exactly what frequency I wanted it for, but I think that's about right. Oh, look at that, 15 metres comes in really good. So 21 decimal 35, that's almost exactly what I wanted it for, and it's one to one. Quite a sharp dip there, 24,950 I think I said it for. One to one. Oh yeah, so 1.2 to one at 28.45, just ever so slightly uh, long, but at 28.5 it's 1.3, which is very, very good. Go down to 80. Let's have a look. Just so we can see what's doing down there. Mind you, the wire is laying on the ground, so I cut it for 3.6. It's still miles too high. I did see a dip down here. So there's a dip at 3.13 megahertz, but that might be that might be a combination of the wire being too long. It's draping over the oh, along the ground, so that's okay. That's something to work on. So I'll, what I'll do later on is I'm going to string that over a tree and see how that goes. So yes, that's the DX Commander antenna built, all band vertical, 80 through to 10 meters. So the antenna uh, was a breeze to build once I figured out what I was doing. I read uh, Callum's instructions very thoroughly. I really recommend doing that. You can print them off of his website. It took me a little bit of time to figure out what I was doing, but then when I realized how simple the construction was and, and how intuitive actually it is, uh, it was fairly straightforward to be able to set up. So I actually, I highly recommend this antenna. It's a really simple antenna and it will get you into, it will get you on pretty much every HF band uh, except for 160, but you could always add 160, I guess, or experiment with it anyway if you want. Uh, in a sm fairly small footprint as well and uh, just the way that he's designed this has been a lot of thought gone into it so I, I highly recommend this antenna if you want to buy one of these uh, DX Commander all band verticals check out Callum's website M0MCX he's got all of the different models on that website the model that I bought was the DX Commander all band vertical the classic also known as the classic so uh, that uh, is listed in the description below um, he also sells another version of antenna which is called the Nebula or the Nebula antenna and that is an 18 meter pole so that's that that is a really big antenna so um, that's uh, that's another one which maybe one day I might be able to experiment with and maybe uh, put that together that'd be kind of fun so uh, Callum if you're watching uh, send it a nebula my way so thank you again for watching the ham radio DX channel and for this uh, review I uh, hope that you enjoyed it please don't forget to subscribe also hit the like button if you uh, enjoyed this content and I'll see you in the next video 73 for now